Well, hey guys, in this video, we're gonna be talking all about leg vein removal. How to get rid of those prominent spider veins and varicose veins on the lower legs. This is a really common cosmetic concern. And in this video, we're gonna be going over tips and tricks to prevent prominent leg veins. And I'm gonna be talking all about the procedures that treat varicose veins and spider veins on the lower legs. First of all, you need to understand why it is that you develop these in the first place. A varicose vein or spider vein is a sign of a weakened vein. The vein in your legs are subject to a lot of pressure, quite literally. Blood pools in the veins and weakens the wall and the little valves that are intended to push the blood back up to your heart. As those valves get weak, the vein dilates out as it fills up with blood and that's why you have a bulge of a varicose vein. It's the result of continued pressure being put on the vein from prolonged standing or prolonged sitting. It affects roughly 40% of women. By age 80, 80% 80 of women have varicose veins. It also can affect men. Now, in addition to prolonged sitting or standing, genetics, hormones, and pregnancy predispose an individual to prominent leg veins. While most people are simply bothered by the appearance of these and they want them gotten rid of for that reason, they can actually become problematic. They can cause quite a bit of discomfort. Prominent varicose veins can become inflamed. That's called phlebitis. And in some situations, you can have leg swelling as a result of poor circulation, and that can lead to ulcers of the lower legs that are really, really challenging to heal. And varicose veins also are a risk factor for developing clots in the lower legs. If you think about it, you basically have static blood pooling there in those dilated, weakened veins. What can you do to prevent varicose veins and spider veins on the lower legs? Get moving, exercise. As the muscles in the legs contract, this helps facilitate return of blood from the legs to the heart heart, minimizing the strain on the veins in your legs, and it also just overall improves circulation. If you are someone who has to sit for prolonged periods of time for your work, try and make it a habit of getting up and moving around a little bit, roughly every 30 minutes. And likewise, if you travel a lot for work, and you have long flights, try and get up every 30 minutes or so and walk the aisles. Maintain a healthy body weight. If you are overweight or obese, this puts more pressure on those little valves and weakens them. Avoid taking long, hot baths or soaking in a hot tub because what ends up happening is this facilitates accumulation of blood in the lower extremities and ultimately could worsen varicose veins. And try and elevate the legs whenever you are sitting down. If you have to stand for a prolonged period of time during the day, in the evening, maybe take a moment to relax with your legs elevated to help facilitate return of blood back to the heart. Wearing compression stockings can be a game changer for this. If you can stand wearing them, they can be pretty uncomfortable, especially if you live somewhere hot and humid like I do. But I do suggest this as a way to prevent the formation of varicose veins and spider veins. And the treatments that I'm gonna be talking about in a moment, the procedures that correct this issue, most of them will require you to wear compression stockings after the procedure to help with the recovery. So it's something that is definitely worth looking into. I suggest being properly fitted for them. If you just go online and order compression stockings and they don't fit you properly, they're not going to have the same effect. Now you can buy compression socks like at an athletic store for, you know, they sell them to runners and stuff to kind of help with recovery allegedly. Those can help, but really what you want is a compression, a graduated compression stock that is fit to your leg. A true graduated compression stocking, it's very actually quite challenging to even put on because they are so tight, really squeezes everything down and helps with the return of blood flow to the heart. If you are on your feet all day for work, I highly suggest considering these. I do think it is a game changer for not only not having leg swelling, but for the formation of leg veins and varicose veins. If you have prominent leg veins, what are the treatment options? Sclerotherapy. This involves injecting a chemical into the veins that irritates the wall of the vein and causes it to kind of scar down and eventually it gets absorbed in the body and goes away. With this treatment, not only do you have the benefit of the vein going away, but overall it can improve circulation in the lower legs. And if you have any discomfort, it can help with that too. In terms of what to expect with sclerotherapy, it's going to depend on 
on the uh, size of the vein. Like for the spider veins, you will notice that they go away in a few weeks, whereas larger varicose veins are going to take more time to resolve. You may need a few treatments of sclerotherapy in order to get the best results, but you don't have to undergo anesthesia. It's a relatively quick in and out procedure. Pulse dye laser therapy may be used for spider veins that are really small and very, very close to the surface of the skin. For the most part, we don't really use this too much on the legs, it's not super effective there. It's more used for spider veins on the face due to sun damage, but basically the laser transmits photons of energy that are absorbed by the blood cells and ultimately that damages the vein and it goes away. Outside of regular laser therapy, you have a specific treatment for the lower leg veins called intravascular or endovascular laser therapy. And this involves inserting a little fiber actually into the vein to deliver that laser energy directly to the vein. This has a very good success rate for getting rid of veins. A similar procedure is called radiofrequency ablation. A similar concept, here you're introducing a catheter and delivering radiofrequency energy to destroy that damaged vein and it will go away. And the downstream effects of these treatments are, again, improvement in circulation, improvement in the appearance of veins, and symptomatic relief. If you have a painful vein or you have a lot of swelling, redness, warmth, this can help. Last but not least is actually surgically removing the damaged vein, something called phlebectomy. This is done in the ambulatory setting, meaning you walk in and you don't have to stay the night. It's not, it doesn't involve you having anesthesia, systemic anesthesia that puts you to sleep, just local anesthesia to the area. Basically the surgeon goes in, makes little incisions and, and removes little pieces of the damaged veins through those little incisions. Minimally invasive procedure. This is in contrast to the old school vein stripping where they went in, put you to sleep, went in and cut out uh, major portions of vein. And that had a much longer healing time, was much more involved in a much riskier procedure. That's not done so much anymore, uh, but ambulatory phlebectomy is certainly a useful procedure, especially for really prominent, painful varicosities. This is a, you know, a great option. So those are the procedures used to treat leg veins and some tips on how to prevent them. But what do you do next? How do you know what the best treatment is? I highly suggest seeing either a board certified dermatologist or a board certified vascular surgeon who specializes in leg veins for evaluation because the right procedure is gonna come down to a few different things. The nature of the vessels, your background medical history, any medications that you might be taking, what your expectations are. So no one procedure is necessarily better than the other. Some procedures are going to be a better choice for certain patients, certain types of veins, in the background of certain medical issues. So there's no one size fits all approach. There are a lot of scammers out there, so be careful if you are getting this from a Groupon, it's probably not in your best interest. A good physical exam is essential not only for determining the right treatment, but actually planning the treatment approach. And in many cases, certain non-invasive tests are needed to evaluate the vein, like an ultrasound. While there's no foolproof way to prevent varicose veins or spider veins from appearing on the lower legs, staying active, not being sedentary, avoiding prolonged sitting or standing can help in minimizing the chances that these appear. But again, they are influenced by your genetics and your hormones. For example, birth control pills, pregnancy can lead to more varicose veins. Many women develop these as a result of pregnancy. If you think about it, not only do you have the hormonal influences, but you have all that increased pressure on your lower legs. So if you are pregnant or contemplating pregnancy, think about keeping your legs elevated um, as much as you can, trying to avoid prolonged standing and keeping active, keeping your body moving. Not only will that help minimize the risks of damage to the veins, but it will make for a healthier pregnancy, provided that you are clear to do so with your, with your OB. So talk to them first, make sure you're okay to move around, but provided you are otherwise healthy. All right, y'all, let me know in the comments, is this something that you deal with? I did get a lot of comments on my recent video about red spots on the legs, asking what about leg veins? So hopefully this addressed those questions about the treatments and how to prevent them. On the end slate, I'm actually going to put that video in case you missed it, all about those little red dots that 
appear on your lower legs after prolonged standing or an intense workout. So check that out if you missed it and that's something that you're dealing with. But if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.